This is a constant flood aquaponic system, meaning that the grow beds actually maintain a consistent level of water in the gravel at all times, and the water is circulating 24-7. And we'll start down here in the fish tank. So we're actually growing koi. These are not fish that we are going to eat. And hopefully they'll come up and we can see them come to the surface. They've been a bit shy in the first couple months they've been in here. But essentially there's a water pump down in here and you can see we have a little foam filter pad on it. And that just prevents big pieces of solids from making their way up to the grow bed. And the water pump pumps underneath the uh, grow beds and then pops up in the middle over there. And we'll walk over here and I'll show you how the whole thing is pumped together. The water rises up through here and it splits in two directions. And these pipes are <clears throat> valved and we leave them wide open, but we can adjust the water flow weaker or stronger if we need to, but we tend to keep them just at full force. And the distribution pipe goes all around the grow bed on both of them. And there's little holes in the pipe that allow water to trickle down. And so basically the water is hitting all edges of the grow bed and is all migrating past plant roots through the gravel and then comes into these um, drains here. If you want to pull up and show them what the drains look we like. Got it. We got some fish action. Oh, look how cute they are. All right. All right, so if you want to take a look at the drain over here, this pipe in here sets the water level in the grow beds and it stays about two inches below the surface of the gravel. You can dig down and see where it gets moist. And essentially, the gravel catches small, fine particles, traps it in there, and bacteria is decomposing all the solid waste and converting it from organic matter into inorganic plant nutrients like nitrates, phosphates. And the plants then use up those nutrients in order to grow, returning clean water back down to the fish. All right, so now we're gonna be doing a walk around of the different kinds of crops we have in here. Today's the second day of spring, and you'll see we got a really good head start. And the way we're able to keep growing in 20 to 30 degree weather on cloudy days is we have a water heater in here to keep the fish warm and also warm up the root zone of these plants. And turns out they grow even in really cold weather pretty quickly if you keep the root zone warm. Today we're gonna be harvesting these mature heads of lettuce, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten which would value at about $3 a piece at your local grocery store. So just today in this small space, we're gonna be pulling out about $30 of value to give you an idea of how substantial this is when you start doing this at home. So <clears throat> we'll get back to this, but let's do a sort of a walk around about what we're growing. We have lettuce, this is cilantro here. And the cilantro, once you pull out the lettuce, the cilantro will start to take over that space. So. We're kind of cropping things in between other crops so that when we harvest one, another one is ready to take over. These are onions here that we've also slipped between plants. These are big white Texas sweet onions, which would be great for slicing. And then <clears throat> over here, we have a mix of different Asian greens. This is Asian Mizuna. This is Shanghai bok choy. This is a row of purple top turnips growing here, which is not specifically Asian, but um, a lot of different countries eat turnips. We have sugar snap peas here, and we haven't gotten around to building our trellis on the back here, but each one of these plants will eventually climb up a big trellis and we'll be harvesting sugar snap peas for a couple months straight. Over on this side are French breakfast radishes, which are already starting to form their little roots. If you wanna zoom in there, so here's our French breakfast radishes. These only take 30 days from seed. So these are only about three weeks old and in another 10 days, they're gonna be ready to pull out. And we'll pull out at one time 40 or 50 radishes, which is another 15 to $20 of produce. Over here we have red lettuce. You hear those birds chirping? Second day of spring. So this is a red lettuce here and it's an oak leaf. And I'll show you why it's called oak leaf. You see the shape of that lettuce there? That is called oak leaf because it looks kind of like an oak tree. So that's a beautiful type of lettuce there. And then most of the other crops that we have here are a duplicate of this side. And the reason we're doing that is because you'll notice we have two different kinds of gravel. On this side, we have the expanded clay pellets, also known as hydrotin. Over here, we have a locally mined product we get out of Salisbury, North Carolina called Permatil. This is an expanded slate. 
and both of them are very light and porous. This one costs about five times as much as this one. So we're trying to do sort of a side-by-side -side to see if there's really any difference. They're both getting the same nutrients, the same flow rates, same plants. So we should be able to get uh, a good uh, gauge on whether or not one works better than the other. All right, so now we are actually gonna harvest all this lettuce. If we don't harvest it now, it's gonna be past its peak maturity. And what happens with lettuce, if it goes too long, it starts to become bitter because then it will shoot up a flower stalk, which is called bolting. You ever heard anybody say my crop is bolting? It means it's starting to reproduce because it's so stressed out and old that it wants to set its seed for next year and continue its uh, genetic line. So what we'll do, and we'll speed this up a little bit after I get started, we're gonna harvest all the different lettuce here and then we'll sort of calculate how much value that has now when you're harvesting if you're harvesting leafy greens like kale or something you would just snip some leaves off and you could actually just snip leaves of lettuce off if you wanted to here and just use the ones that you wanted but we need to make room for our cilantro and onions so you want to grab the plant by the bottom and gently pull it out and you do that to get most of the root structure out if you leave too many roots in your grow bed, it's gonna clog up your grow bed with organic matter, creating anaerobic pockets or pockets without much oxygen, which tends to damage the biology of the system. So this is one extremely beautiful head of lettuce. And this started from just one tiny seed, maybe six or seven weeks ago. And when you do this at home, you really start to realize how connected to your food and connected to the earth you get. You hear all these birds chirping. It's just such a beautiful hobby to have because you have pet fish and you have vegetables, you have healthy eating. It's just a really holistic experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and start stacking these over here and we'll just get all these out. Now, before we speed this up and do a fast motion on it, notice how we have other plants in between these lettuce plants. We do not want to disturb the root zone of the plants that are not being harvested. So we're just gonna gently Pull these out and we will keep all the nice leaves that fall off. We will discard the gross yellow ones. And this is kind of what happens when you let them be too crowded is you have these, this kind of dead growth underneath, but it's not a big deal. Maybe losing 2% of our crop to that. All right, now if you come over here, what you want to do after you harvest every time is make sure you get all the debris out, all the dead plant material. This, if you leave this, is what encourages pests, like insects and worms and grubs to invade your growing space. We don't want that. So we want to keep it kind of sanitary in between planting. And now we have all this great room to plant some other things. Okay, so now we've harvested our 30 or so dollars of fresh salad greens and what you want to do immediately when you harvest is if you have roots intact, you can actually keep, if you bag this lettuce up just like that, this would stay alive in your refrigerator for three weeks to a month without going bad because it's still alive. If you don't want the roots in there, you can just snap that off and now you have a marketable head of lettuce. And then this will stay fresh for two to three weeks, just like that. But you want to get this into your refrigerator immediately before it starts to wilt up. We have our first bountiful harvest here. And I want to thank Canvas Tattoo and Art Gallery for sponsoring these videos and for letting us educate the public about our mission of 100 Gardens, where we teach aquaponics in schools to provide hands-on learning opportunity for students, for science, math, business, marketing, and nutrition. We do it all through aquaponics. If you would like to continue learning about this, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want more information on our school programming, go to 100gardens.org. We'll see you next time.